A supercritical airfoil is an airfoil designed, primarily, to delay the onset of wave drag in the transonic speed range. Supercritical airfoils are characterized by their flattened upper surface, highly cambered aft section, and smaller leading edge radius compared with traditional airfoil shapes. The supercritical airfoils were designed in the 1960s, by then NASA engineer Richard Whitcomb, and were first tested on a modified North American T2C Buck I. After this first test, the airfoils were tested at higher speeds on the TF-8A Crusader. While the design was initially developed as part of the supersonic transport project at NASA, it has since been mainly applied to increase the fuel efficiency of many high subsonic aircraft. The supercritical airfoil shape is incorporated into the design of a supercritical wing. Research in 1940 by Deutsche Versuchsanstalt Far 1 Quartera Luftfahrts K.A. Kawaki led to subsonic profiles very similar to the supercritical profiles, which was the basis for the objection in 1984 against the U.S. patent specification for the supercritical airfoil. Description Research aircraft of the 1950s and 60s found it difficult to break the sound barrier, or even reach Mach 0.9, with conventional airfoils. Supersonic airflow over the upper surface of the traditional airfoil induced excessive wave drag and a form of stability loss called Mach tuck. Due to the airfoil shape used, supercritical wings experience these problems less severely and at much higher speeds, thus allowing the wing to maintain high performance at speeds closer to Mach 1. Techniques learned from studies of the original supercritical airfoil sections are used in designing airfoils for high-speed subsonic and transonic aircraft from the Airbus A300 and Boeing 777 to the McDonnell Douglas Avenue 8B Harrier II. Supercritical airfoils feature four main benefits, they have a higher drag divergence Mach number, they develop shock waves further aft than traditional airfoils, they greatly reduce shock-induced boundary-less separation, and their geometry allows for more efficient wing design. At a particular speed for a given airfoil section, the critical Mach number, flow over the upper surface of an airfoil can become locally supersonic, but slows down to match the pressure at the trailing edge of the lower surface without a shock. However, at a certain higher speed, the drag divergence Mach number, a shock is required to recover enough pressure to match the pressures at the trailing edge. This shock causes transonic wave drag, and can induce flow separation behind it. Both have negative effects on the airfoil's performance. At a certain point along the airfoil, a shock is generated, which increases the pressure coefficient of the critical value CP crit, where the local flow velocity will be Mach 1. The position of this shock wave is determined by the geometry of the airfoil. A supercritical foil is more efficient because the shock wave is minimized and is created as far aft as possible thus reducing drag. Compared to a typical airfoil section, the supercritical airfoil creates more of its lift at the aft end, due to its more even pressure distribution over the upper surface. In addition to improved transonic performance, a supercritical wing's enlarged leading edge gives it excellent high lift characteristics. Consequently, Aircraft utilizing a supercritical wing have superior takeoff and landing performance. This makes the supercritical wing a favorite for designers of cargo transport aircraft. A notable example of one such heavy lift aircraft that uses a supercritical wing is the C-17 Globemaster III. See also, Whitcomb Area Rule, NACA Airfoil. Notes. External links. Supercritical airfoils at Aerospace Award, Supercritical Airfoil, U.S. Centennial of Flight Commission, 1, the Supercritical Airfoil, NASA Dryden Flight Research Center.